we have gathered this evening to celebrate the Mass of the Last Supper. It is on that Last Supper that Christ instituted the sacrament of the Most Holy Eucharist. He took the bread and said, this is my body. And he took the wine and said, this is my blood, giving up for you. Christ, on that table, gave us his real flesh and blood as food and drink. He gave us himself by dying on the cross. On this day, we celebrate three principal mysteries. One is the institution of the most holy Eucharist. The second one is the institution of the holy orders, the ordination of priests. And then the third one is the mystery of service. In the first reading, we read what happened. Christ was exemplified in that lamb that was slain as a Passover lamb in the Old Testament. The people of Israel were asked, slain this lamb and smell the blood of the lamb on the doorpost because God is going to send his angel to go round and kill all the firstborn of the Egyptians. But then, when I see this blood, I will pass over you. When I see this blood, you will be saved. When I see this blood, I will know that this blood is a sign of your salvation. Then I will pass over you. Christ is the true Lamb of God. You remember what happened? When John was baptizing at the river Jordan, he saw Christ and he said, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold he who takes away the sins of the world. So Christ came to save us from sin and death. Just as it was prefigured in the Old Testament that the blood smeared on the doorpost of the Israelites will be a sign that there are Israelites in that household and then the angel will pass over them without killing any of them. And that same Passover, Christ celebrated with his disciples. On that table, he gave himself for the life of the world. He poured his life blood. Take this. Eat. This is my flesh. This is my body. Take this. Drink. This is my blood. Christ gave us himself as food and drink. And that becomes a sign of his love for us, self-giving. He gave us everything, including himself, as a sign of his love for us. Self-giving, self-sacrificing. The second reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians made it very clear that on the night before he was to suffer, he was at the table with his disciples and he instituted this sacrament. The gospel we heard from the gospel of John did not have the words of the institution, but then the gospel of John has a wonderful theological details about the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. Go and read John chapter 6. It has a wonderful theological details about the real presence of Christ in the body and the blood of Christ in the species of bread and wine that we consecrate. 
And there comes the second thing, the institution of the sacrament of the holy orders. Christ, who is the chief shepherd, the high priest, gave his disciples this priesthood on this night when he said, do this in memory of me. You should continue to celebrate this sacrifice of the cross and sacrifice of the altar until I come again. So he empowered them. What I have done, I give you the power to do so. That is why whenever a priest stays upon the altar and speaks the word of Christ, he consecrates, and there comes this wonderful action, transubstantiation. The substance of bread and wine changed to become the true body and blood of Christ. Exactly what Christ did on the Last Supper. That power was given to the priest. And on a night like this, I would encourage all of us to please pray for your priest. Pray for Catholic priests all over the world. Pray for priests who are still in crisis. Those who are still discerning what they have gone into. Pray for priests who are being tempted by the devil. Pray for priests. It is very important. The devil is very smart. And if devil gets one priest, just one priest, you would imagine how many souls will be lost. So pray for your priests. And the third action would be the washing of feet. Christ, after eating, he removed his robes, tied a towel, and began to wash the feet of his disciples. In the Jewish culture, it is the function of a slave to wash the feet. It is the function of a slave to do that kind of job. So what happens? If somebody comes, to, comes into your house, the slave of the house will wash the person's feet before the person comes into the house. Christ showed us an example of humility. Philippians made it very clear. Though he was in the form of God, Jesus did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. He emptied himself. Kenosis. He emptied himself of his glory. And he took the form of a slave. And that's exactly what he did with his disciples on that last supper. He showed them that he is a slave unto them, despite the fact that he is their Lord, he is their master, he is their teacher, he is still their slave. And he teaches us to do the same to others. There comes what I keep saying, humility is very important in the life of every Christian. And if you are not humble, I keep saying this, if you are not humble, you cannot go to heaven. And Christ has taught us example of humility by taking the form of a slave and washing the feet of his disciples. And he tells us this evening, do same. Do same. We have to wash the feet of others. We have to be humble to wash the feet of others. No one goes to heaven alone. We have to go together. We have to be at the service of others. And there is no way we can serve if we are not humble. And there is no way we can serve if we do not imitate the example of Christ who humbled himself. 
and took the human form and died for us. Humility becomes very important in our lives as Christians. Let's imitate the example of Christ. In our world of today, self-ego, self-esteem, fame, power, authority. This is what we crave for. But Christ is telling us that the only way to get it is to be humble. He who humbles himself will be exalted. This evening, we are going to watch the feet of those who have been chosen. And that is an example that Christ has told us. Remember, as a priest, you can see priesthood as, as an exalted position. You can see it as a position of authority or power. But Christ has taught us, this is what you have to do. Wash the feet of your flock. And that becomes a sign of humility. He also reminds all of us to wash the feet of one another. So as we continue, let's thank God for the gift of Christ who gave us himself in the Eucharist. Let us thank God also for the gift of the priesthood. And let us ask God to give us the grace to serve one another in humility. He who humbles himself will be exalted. We pray and ask the good Lord to bless us as we go into these three days that we prepare ourselves for Easter celebration, the three June, that God may give us the spirit to follow his example, the example of humility, the way of the cross that will eventually lead us to our salvation. May the good Lord bless you and bless these words in your hearts. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen.